and welcome to Full Bar. In this episode, we are going to talk about testing serverless applications. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> This is the first video on a series of videos and the kind of topic of this series is about hunting errors in serverless applications. So in this series we are going to, to cover topics like testing, debugging live applications, chaos engineering and whatever comes after that. If you have some topic that you would like to know in particular, let me know in the comment box below. I like to create content that you want to watch. In general, this playlist came from a lot of the comments you have left in many videos and requests that you have made to me that you want to know more about testing and debugging, so that's why I'm going to make this series. So in the first part of the series we are going to talk about unit testing and integration testing, then we are moving to debugging applications, live applications in the cloud, and then we are going to move to chaos engineering. So that's kind of the first uh, videos that are coming out for this series, but as always, I can do a season two with more and more content on this topic. So the idea of this series is to cover all different types of errors and how to hunt them. So the testing part is to hunt the errors that you have created when you code, about your business logic, the unit testing, then we move to the integration testing to catch those errors about the integration points of your application, then the bugging live applications that is finding those errors that didn't were, were not catch in the testing phase and went on to production, so how to find those errors, and then cause engineering that is to figure out errors that you are not 100% sure they are there and you need to have the full blown system in production and start doing all crazy experiments on it. So it's going to be a pretty fun series. So this video is an introductory video to testing and we are going to talk about what is testing serverless applications and things like that. So this is going to be a quite theoretical video, but I promise that the next videos that are following to this are very hands-on and very practical. So you can uh, get your hands on the code and start experiment. So let's go and start talking about what is testing serverless applications. Let's start talking about what is testing. What it means? Testing is something that we do to validate that our software does what it's supposed to be doing. One way of testing is going to run manually in our software and visit all the features and try them one by one, and do this every time we do any modification in our application. Meaning that if we touch that feature or not, we need to go and manually do that. I had a job where my job was basically to test things this way. We had a checklist and we have all the things we needed to make sure that were working and we needed to go one by one and make sure everything was working every time a new release was coming out. This is extremely expensive, slow and prone to errors due to missing something. So for example, sometimes I was just confused and I forgot one line or some new feature came out and the spreadsheet I was working with had not been updated. And this is very expensive, you're paying a human salary for doing this and every time you release, so basically it can take one day to have a test through your application. I don't think this is very, very productive. So in order to make testing more valuable, we need to have some way to automate this process. We need to automate the tests. So every time we release something, we deploy it, we can have some tests that run automatically and we can make sure that in that moment that the software is doing what it needs to be doing. These are the automated tests. We have different types of automated tests. The three most common are the unit test, the integration test, and the acceptance test. Unit tests are the tests that are testing the smallest a unit of our code. Usually are their functions or methods and they're really focusing on the business logic and what the code is doing. In tests are, as I said, testing our business logic and they're very cheap to execute and write. Usually unit tests are running without internet, they are not connecting to any database, they are just running very fast in your local environment. You can run them many times 
Integration tests are these uh, tests that are testing the relationships, individual relationships between different parts of the service. So we are testing how different services are connecting, like for example, in the serverless world, how our Lambda is connecting to Dynamo, how our Lambda is connected to API Gateway, how all these integrations are working one by one. Integration tests, they usually take a little longer to execute and they're harder to write. Usually uh, developers tend to have a lot of issues writing integration tests. They like to do uh, testing locally, running uh, the cloud services locally and testing this in this way, but I will not recommend doing that because when you are running the local version of the cloud services, then you might not have exactly the same uh, version that is on the internet and that's what you want to test. You want to test the integration, you want to make sure that the connection is working properly. So I always recommend to write tests and run them in the cloud. They're usually harder to write but the moment you start getting used to writing these integration tests they become easier. And the system tests are usually end-to-end -end tests. So we are testing the whole system, we are testing through different scenarios. So in the serverless world, it will be testing the API gateway, the Lambda and the Dynamo all in one test, not everything individually. We are testing on the cloud, we are testing on a deployed system and they are the most time consuming to run. Usually they can take longer to run and they are the hardest to write and maintain. Developers <laughs> tend to think that these ones are very fragile and they don't like them in general. We know from the traditional world of testing pyramid. The testing pyramid shows how tests goes from being abundant and cheap and not very complete to be more reliable, few of them and more expensive to run. So in the bottom of the pyramid we have the unit test because the, in the traditional server architecture most of the complexity is in the code. We need a lot of unit tests to make sure all our code is doing what it should be doing. Then integration tests are uh, the second middle layer and they are um, more than the unit tests, but we don't have that many integrations in the server world, so we have less. And then we have the acceptance tests in the top that they are the most expensive, the most complicated to create, and usually they take the longer to run. The more you go in this pyramid up, usually you need to have different environments for performing this test. In the server world, all this environment has a lot of cost associated, so in general, people are very kind of afraid of creating new environments and creating new infrastructure just for the sake of testing. So they tend to reutilize a lot of things and they tend to do all kinds of things because uh, the infrastructure is more expensive. This pyramid doesn't apply to the serverless applications for many reasons. Functions are very simple. There is not much complexity in it. So there is not need to create a lot of unit tests. Unit tests are kind of a lot of overkill in a lot of cases because we have very simple functions that we can just write a couple of tests and make sure everything works. In the serverless application, as I mentioned many times, there are a lot of integrations as we are going to use so many managed services. We need to make sure that all the integrations between all the different components are working and that's one of the biggest risks of the serverless world, the integrations and configurations. Also, as I said, most of the complexity of serverless applications is not in the functions, but in the configuration of the whole system, how everything is connected together, and we need to make sure that everything works end to end. The risk of errors move from the code to the architectural level. So we need to test this in a different way. This is why we need to shuffle a bit our testing pyramid. I will put the integration test in the top of the pyramid, or in this case, in the bottom of the pyramid, of, because our system, we have a lot of integrations and we want to make sure that everything works together and everything, every relationship is proper configured. We want to spend a lot of time testing all our integrations. Also because of the nature of serverless running integration tests in the cloud shouldn't be expensive as it was in traditional server applications. If we need environments, environments are um, just you pay for how much you use. So if the environment is idle, you don't need to worry. You can also create environments on the fly just um, for the purpose of testing. So that's very good. And then you can destroy them the moment the tests are done. In the middle part of the pyramid, we will have the acceptance testing. We want to make sure that everything in our application is working end to end. We need to test all our user flows. Those tests, as the integration test, should not be expensive to set up anymore because 
these are tests that will go in an environment, serverless environment, where we just pay for what we use. However, acceptance tests are a little bit more complex to set up and to code because we need the whole um, application and we need to know the boundaries of our system, we need to know uh, what kind of results we are expecting and things like that. And finally, in the bottom or top of the pyramid, as little, uh, we need to have unit tests. We need to make sure that everything works, but in general our functions are very simple and they do one thing, so this uh, code should not be very complicated, so we don't need that many unit tests. This was the video for today, I hope you like it, if you did give a big thumbs up and remember that more videos are coming on this subject, if you have any questions, comments or whatever you want to know, let me know in the comment box below, I always like to make videos that you want to watch. Around here as always there are other videos from my channel that are recommended by YouTube, so go ahead and click and if not I see you in the next episode of FUBAR, ciao ciao!